Alright. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory and honor. We ask you, Lord, that you speak to us tonight. Help us to hear and understand your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Darcy. Okay, let us read from uh, the book of Revelation 15 verse 5, Revelation 15 5, yeah. who's there? Are you there? Okay. Think, you don't get it. She don't get it? But just be careful. No, it's easy now. And you, you got it? Yeah, I already got it there. I see. Exodus 25 verse 40. Well, can you just speak? I just said, because this one is a bit. Okay, okay. It's okay. Let's see. It's okay, my sister. I want to talk about a very powerful message. A very pivotal message. Exodus 25, 40. I want to talk about the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, so, so, so our basic scripture will be, I mean our, our foundational scriptures will be, yes, Exodus 25, verse 40. Hebrews, <coughs> Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 and Revelation chapter 15 verse 5. So we can disperse that amongst each other. I will start with Exodus 25 40. One of you read, okay, Brother Christian reads Hebrews. Hebrews or Hebrews? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 and our sister will read. Revelation 15 verse 5. Amen. Chapter 8 verse 5. Chapter 8 verse 5. Okay. So it says. Very <coughs> exalted. Uh, Exodus 25 verse 20. Chapter 25 verse 14. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. They serve as a pattern and foreshadowing of what, what has its true existence and reality in the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tabernacle, he was sworn by God, saying, See that you make it all exactly according to the pattern which was shown to you on the mountain. Amen. Okay. <laughs> and after that, I looked and behold, the temple of the tabernacles of the testimony in heaven was opened. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, what, what, what did that scripture say again in your translation? Mike? Yes. And after that, I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. The, tabern the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. The te temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. All right? It says, I saw in heaven the temple that is the tabernacle mm -hmm. of the covenant law, and it was opened. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, so what we see in the book of Exodus chapter 25 is uh, a stern instruction that came to Moses on the holy mountain of Sinai. Yeah? But uh, allow me to do a little rewind. Yeah, uh, You remember that uh, back in the garden, 
Adam and Eve disobeyed the Lord. And in that place, before their disobedience, there was uh, holiness. In that place, there was worship. Their hearts <coughs> were totally endeared unto the Lord until they sinned against the Lord. Yeah? But we see that, uh, as, as Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When Adam and Eve sinned, the glory left. Yeah? They sinned against the Lord and they were banished from the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. They were banished from the presence of God. And in the process, the glory that was here left. If you listen well to the, to the teachings of the prophet recently, you hear he, talk, he, talk, he talks about how the Lord desired, had planned, that through their obedience, if they had obeyed that law, that command, that instruction, to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of, the, of good and evil, the Lord would have done this. He would have taken their heads and then taken them along that way, the way that leads to the tree of life. <coughs> Amen. Amen. And in the process of expounding this revelation that is uh, uh, hidden in this way to the tree of life, the prophet said <coughs> that uh, you can imagine that when the cherubim of glory came with flaming sword, you can imagine that the, the presence of the Lord, the throne of God, was essentially in that place. The ark of God's covenant was there. The glory of the Lord was there. Amen? Because wherever you see the, the cherubim of glory, then you know that the Lord is there. Because when Isaiah saw the cherubim, the Lord was there. He saw the Lord there. When Ezekiel saw the cherubim, he also saw the Lord there. That? The cherubim, these are the heavenly angels. These are heavenly creatures, so to say, that, uh, that protect, that guard the glory. In fact, it says, it is said, when you talk about the Lord Jehovah, He is the one who is enthroned above the two cherubim of glory. So wherever He goes, these cherubim go. If you read the book of Ezekiel, you see how the, the relationship between the cherubim of glory and the wheel, the wheel of the throne of God. And how that the spirit in the wheel and the spirit in the cherubim it is one essentially. That where, where the cherubim want to go, there the will also wants to go. Ah, that guy saw a lot, yeah? He could see that where the cherubim were going, the will were also going, and the two were in sync, perfect sync. And they always went together. When this one was going this way, the one followed, and there was harmony, and there was no <coughs> pulling. There was no division. There was no conflict. Amen. So, the cherubim of glory was there. So, meaning, the heavenly worship was happening in the Garden of Eden. The true worship of heaven. Huh? Very powerful. But now, after they sinned against the Lord, and were banished from the Garden, they lost the heavenly worship. They lost it. Their hearts were stolen away and they began to worship idols in the process of time. The sons of men began to worship idols. <coughs> and, uh, and you find now that when the Lord appeared to Abraham, he finds Abraham soaked in idol worship. Because now, they've been trying, because that God-shaped hole inside of each and every one of us testified to them, that in their, in their conscience, testified to them that there is a higher worship, that you are meant to worship, that you were created to worship, only that they have lost their way home. And so, in in an, attempt to, in an attempt to do some worship, 
They worshipped idols. And thereby drawing further and further away from the Lord. So they began to worship idols. They, they know that there is a worship that we ought to observe. Yeah? There is a worship we ought to observe. There is a worship we were created for. But heaven was closed. Heaven was closed and mankind has been blinded, <coughs> has been walking in darkness, has for a long time walked without the knowledge of the true God. Of course, we know that uh, Enoch walked with God and he was normal. There was a remnant, but all in all, the majority, <coughs> we know that from Adam until, until Noah, yeah? There was always a remnant there until the eight were saved. And then after the eight, after Noah, some generations passed. And then you find Abraham. Abraham, his father worshipped idols. Abraham also worshipped idols. His father, his grandfather also worshipped idols. And his great grandfather also worshipped idols. And so, they were, they were, they, 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 you know, in, in their hearts they knew, we ought to worship. There is a worship that needs to be done. We, 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 there is a worship, a, a, a true worship that must be done. But they couldn't quite get their hands on it. Huh? They couldn't get their hands on it. They, they, because that God shaped hole, everybody, everybody created by the Lord. But the Lord Jehovah knows that they ought to worship. Knows that they ought to. But the problem is, we have lost our way home. We have, our minds have been darkened. Sin has deceived us. And so, instead of observing the heavenly worship, we observe an earthly worship, idol worship. Amen. And so for a long time, man has not known how to worship correctly and how to find their way back home. Yeah? Back to the heart of the Father. So they have been walking around in this uh, darkness, stumbling over worship. And you know idol worship? Idol worship, if you worship an idol, and we all know that worshiping an idol has uh, certain regulations, yeah? requirements <laughs> yeah? all idol worshippers they know their lives are run by their idol worship in fact all areas of their lives are informed by their worship because what you worship becomes the, your, your higher purpose becomes your goal therefore everything else that you do must align itself up with what you worship. Whoever you worship, wherever you worship, whatever it is that you do, must find its place in light of what you worship or whom you worship. Your worship ultimately informs everything else that you do. And in that process, you find now that idol worship required sacrifice. No? Human sacrifice, sacrifice of pigs. So idol worship informed all the, every area of their lives. That's why you find now some of them they have the God for rain and thunder, they have God for childbearing, they have a God for you know good health, they have a God for success and good luck, they have a, a God for business, yeah. They, they have a God for protection. They, they, they have a God for uh, for maybe to protect their employees. Yeah? They have a God that protects only their family. And then another idol that protects only their household. And then another, you know, so many idol gods. So when they need a bumper harvest, then they worship this God. When they need this, they worship this God. When they are traveling, they worship this God. And so they became confused. And every idol has requirements, requirements, requirements. And you have to make sure that you do perfectly, 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 perfectly to each one of those. 
So now, in that confusion, mankind not knowing which one is the true worship of heaven, stumbling over idol worship upon idol worship, yeah? They worship this one, when this one does not work, <coughs> in fact, they do this. When one country or one nation defeats another nation, they begin to praise their gods, yeah? Now, if this nation become mighty, defeating maybe ten nations, and then another go, and then there's a, a, a smaller nation then that is afraid of this one, they may tell, they may, they may, they may begin to do this. They throw away their idols, and then they begin to worship that idol that is helping that country, that, that, that their enemy. Perhaps that God will have mercy on them. <laughs> no? <laughs> or, in fact, those that win, those that conquer and defeat other nations, after they have defeated, then they say, I also want this God. <laughs> Who knows, maybe this God will also help me. <laughs> so, so much confusion. And in that confusion, in the midst of that confusion, then the Lord appeared to Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham. And he said, Abraham, leave. I will take you to the land that I will show you. Amen? So the Lord took Abraham on the journey to discover, to learn, to understand, to know the true worship. Hallelujah. He says, Abraham, I, I take you now out of this confusion so that you know the one true worship, the, the real worship, the one that, the worship that truly worships the one true God. Amen. Because all others are false. All others are they are demons. Demons that are camouflaging. Because the, 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 the devil says, I will exalt myself. Yeah? He says, I will be like God most high. Yeah? And so those demons now, they have come. <coughs> they have come. And, uh, and they confuse the people of Jehovah. Amen. But the Lord came to rescue Abraham out of idol worship and to show him the true worship of heaven. And then he was beginning something through him. Yeah? He was beginning now to, 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 to craft for himself a people that will observe the true heavenly worship. Amen. But he took him out of idolatry. And then he told Abraham that your children will be in slavery. That your children will be in slavery in another land. But uh, they, 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 the Lord will rescue them. And it happened that in their third generation indeed, the Lord took, who's that? Israel to Egypt with his sons, yeah? The, fourth, the third generation, yeah? They took him to the to the Egypt. They took Israel. He took Israel to Egypt, and in Egypt, guess what? There were idol worship there also. There was idol worship. They encountered, in fact, as the man of God said, in in, in Egypt they worshipped about three hundred gods, or is it more? More than three hundred gods. About three hundred idol gods. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. About three hundred idol gods. And when they went there, though they worshipped the Lord, you know, with time, the children of Israel eventually began to assimilate into the idol worship of Israel. But then, when the, when the Egyptians turned against them, then they remembered, oh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. And they began to cry to him. That? And then with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, he rescued them. Amen. Amen. When he rescued them, ha, he <coughs> took them down the way of the wilderness of repentance. No? <laughs> to take Egypt out of them. <laughs> to take Egypt out of them. No? And in that journey, on that journey, 
when they were going through the wilderness of repentance, on that journey, the Lord, He did this. He opened heaven. And a mighty revelation that has never been seen before since the fall of Adam. A mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. A mighty revelation of the heavenly worship was revealed on that holy mountain. But now look at this. When the Lord was taking them, there too was idol worship. Eh? He took Abraham out of idol worship. Then he took them to Egypt. There was idol worship too. And then when he took them down to Canaan, he said, even in Canaan, there too, the Jebusites, the Jebusites the Hivites, the Hittites, the Amalekites, the Philistines, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Amorites, and the Edomites, and all the Ites, and the, you know, the Jebusites, they worshipped the idols. Baal, Dagon, and all the rest. <laughs> they worshipped the idols too. Huh. Idol worship everywhere. I will come back to the, to the mountain. But look at this now. When he took them now to the promised land, after he found then he poured out his judgment on these nations that worshiped idols. When he took Egypt, I mean, not Egypt, but Israel there. And then you go to Joshua. When Joshua, <coughs> the book of Joshua, the last book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 24, I think. When he took them there, Joshua, the man of God, Joshua 24, before the Lord took him, he said, we, we need to sort out something here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Chapter? 24. Chapter 24. Uh, this is basically what I was saying here. Now, I, I, I don't want to start from this one, but maybe we should. But I'll, I'll just highlight, yeah? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. huh. Now, you see, this is, this is now the issue that Joshua is trying to bring to them here. <coughs> but you see, he says, Long ago, your aunt, I'm, I'm now chapter verse 2, yeah? And I'm just going to jump from verse to verse without telling you, yeah? He says, Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, they lived beyond the Euphrates, the Euphrates River, and worshipped other gods, idol gods. Yeah? But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him through Canaan and gave him many descendants. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Until Jacob. And then he took him to Egypt. Amen. And then he said, <coughs> In Egypt, he rescued them. Hallelujah. When they cried out to him. With mighty, wonderful miracles. Yeah? And then he said, verse 8, I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. Hallelujah. And then he said, uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 10, but I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and I, and I delivered you out of his hand. And then he says, then you crossed the Jordan. Now, this is now the journey out of Egypt. Then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, you know, as did also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Gagishites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, but he gave them into their hands. <coughs> I gave them into your hands. I sent them hornet ahead of you, and all those things, done. Huh? And then it says, verse 14, Now, fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Amen. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped before the Euphrates River and in Egypt. And serve the Lord. You see that? You see now what I was saying here? <laughs> he was saying, Your father has worshipped idol gods beyond the Euphrates. On the other side of the Euphrates River. And in Egypt, there too, they worshipped the idols when they assimilated into the Egyptian culture. Amen. <coughs> but he says, you need to worship the Lord faithfully. The idol 
gods beyond the Euphrates. Throw them away. The idol gods in uh, Egypt. Throw them away. <coughs> Amen. And serve the Lord. He says. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable for you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see that? Here is the, here is the, the, the controversy around worship. Amen. He says, in, in Euphrates, beyond the Euphrates, they worshiped. But the worship there was not the heavenly worship. Yeah? That's not the worship that is required. That is not the true worship. That worship is misguided. That worship is not for the one true God. The one true God who created the heavens and the earth and mankind. Amen. And gave you the breath of life. He says, that worship beyond the Euphrates. In Africa, they worship snakes and, and elephants. Says, that worship there. That worship of your ancestors. <laughs> I, I was thinking to myself, but these guys were worshiping the idol gods beyond the Euphrates. Where were my great great grandfathers? <laughs> my great 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 grandfathers were alive this time. But what were they worshiping? Yeah? You see that? You are also in this story. It says, your great 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 grandfather back to those days. What were they worshiping? They were not worshiping Jehovah. Of course, because we know that we did not just appear all of a sudden in the 1990s. Yeah? Just out of the blue. <laughs> no, we, we are descendants, yeah? We came from, we are descendants of our ancestors. Where were they that time when Joshua was speaking these words? I don't know. But they were worshiping something. And Joshua is saying, that worship is not the true heavenly worship. It's not the worship that is focused on the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah God, who gave us the breath of life. He says that worship is not the true worship. It's misguided worship. Amen? In Egypt. So, meaning, there is only one true worship. Hallelujah. So, meaning, in Euphrates, beyond the Euphrates, they, they had a worship. They observed the worship. But this is not the true one. In Egypt, they was observed the worship. It's not true. In, in, the, in, the, in the land of the Hittites, where he brought them, the Hivites, the Canaanites, there is also worship. But that worship is not the one true worship for the one true God. It's wrong worship. It's misguided. It is demonic. It is evil. It is sick. It is sickening. <laughs> Amen. It is, it is not acceptable. It is unacceptable to the Lord. The one true God that we worship. The one who gave you life. He said, that is not the worship he wants us to give. No, 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 no. He does not want us to give that form of worship. And if you end up worshiping that way, that worship is wrong. It is wrong. It is wrong. Huh? It is not true. It is not true. It is misguided. It's a lie. <laughs> it is a mistake. <laughs> Amen. A deadly mistake. <clears throat> but now go back to the mountain. When you go back to the mountain of, of, of Revelation now in Exodus, then he says, look at this. Look at this what happened. He says, Moses, come, come, come. He says, Moses, come up here. Bring your brother Aaron and his son, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar, and some elders of Israel, including Korah and Levit. They went up to the mountain and they ate in the presence of the Lord. The one true God. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who gave us the breath of life. Ah, the one who gave me teeth. Teeth. <laughs> Amen. The one who gave me eyes. That one. The real one, the real, real one, not idols. The real one, the one who gave you a name before you, your mother and father knew you. Oh, this is powerful. They ate in his presence. Then he said, Moses, 
I want you to come up here. And then, when he took Moses up the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, he began to show Moses some things. Very powerful things. <laughs> because, for a long time, man has been worshipping, but man has not been worshipping right. But now, he said, Moses, come, I show you now the right worship. <laughs> Amen. So I show you now the real one, the excellent one, the perfect one, the, the one that touches my heart, <laughs> the one that is the true worship. Amen. He says, Moses, come. I show you now, and then you dispense to them. And then he says, when he left that place, he says, Moses, please make sure you don't add and you don't remove anything. <laughs> Make sure you do it exactly as I showed you on that mountain. You say, exactly as I showed you on the mountain. According to the pattern showed you on the mountain. He say, Moses, Moses, make sure that what you do, that what you execute, that what you the, 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 what, what, what you what, 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 what you are going to build down there even as I have commanded you make sure that this one is exactly according to the blueprint the original blueprint that I showed you on the mountain so the question is what did God show Moses <laughs> yeah what did he show Moses amen but it is written for us it is written for us what he showed him. No? If you read in chapter 25 there, verse 40, that's where he said, see that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. No? And then if you reverse a few chapters back, you see verse chapter 24. And the whole of 25, he is talking about this revelation. Amen? He is revealing now to Moses. He's revealing to Moses what he was supposed to execute. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Even in chapter 26, 27, 28, Exodus, 29, the heavenly worship. No, no, wait, wait. I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. <laughs> he says, he showed Moses what Moses was supposed to execute. He showed him a blueprint. Amen? A pattern of heaven. He says, he says, according to the pattern I showed you on the mountain. The question is, what did he show Moses? But another question comes. Or is the question, should I say, it is important to take notice. Yeah, that's the word. It is important to take notice. Yeah? That when the, when the Lord took Moses up the mountain, eh, read. Oh. When the Lord took Moses up the mountain, we'll finish soon. Eh. You see, I told you. It's not enough. It says, when the Lord took Moses up the mountain, it is important to take notice that the Lord, Jehovah my God, he did not take Moses to Egypt. Oh. No, no. He did not take Moses to Egypt. What else? He did not take Moses to mourn. You hear me, my sister? Yeah? This is, this is very powerful. He did not take him to mourn. <coughs> you know the Moabites, yeah? They are the ones who sent their immoral women to come and deceive the Israelites so that the Israelites would begin to worship their idol gods. Yeah? He said, I know how to defeat the Israelites. <laughs> he said, just send them some immoral women. I know, I know those men. Their hearts will just melt immediately. <laughs> and then they will begin to follow and worship. But he says he did not show him Moab. Because Moab was the enemy of the Lord. The Moabites and the Moabite women and their idol gods were enemies of the Lord. <clears throat> Egypt and their idol gods were enemies of the Lord. The Hivites and their idol worship were enemies of the Lord. The Jebusites and their idol worships were enemies of God. 
So surely, 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 the Lord did not take Moses to Jebusite, to the Jebusites, or to the Canaanites, or to the heavy Hevites, and say, look, look how the Hevites are building their temples. I want you to copy that and do what as you saw. No, 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 no. Ah, no, no, no. Abomination. <laughs> no, no. Not my God. Yeah? He said, he did not take Moses to Canaan. Because they were in the wilderness, yeah? He did not take him to Canaan and show him the cities of Canaan and say, look, this building and that building and this structure and that structure and that structure, I like them. I want you to copy and replicate. I said, no, no. In fact, what happened was this. As a matter of fact, the Lord took Moses into heaven itself. Into heaven. Because they have been building temples and making for themselves priests to serve in their idol gods, to serve their idol gods, thinking that this was the true worship. But he says, no. Moses, I want to show you the true, the real one, the original one, the one that is truly the one I want, the worship I want, the place where I live. And I want you to take that and replicate it here. So the Lord, for 40 days and 40 nights, took Moses into heaven and showed him thoroughly, perfectly, one by one, instrument by instrument, the house of the Lord, the inner court, the outer court, the holy of hope. Eh? Holy of Holies, and showed him the heavenly beings, the heavenly host, the angels of heaven, showed him ah, the ark of God's covenant in heaven. How do I know? I know because Revelation 15 verse 5 says, the temple that is the, what? The tabernacle of the of testimony. testimony in heaven. Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, how is John uh, supposed, how is John expecting us to understand what, the, what that means? He said, he knows what it, we, we know what it means because that is exactly what he showed Moses. That's what Moses saw. So Moses was showed by the Lord the eternal tabernacle of the Lord. Amen the eternal tabernacle where the eternal worship takes place the unadulterated eternal worship of Jehovah takes place very powerful so Moses saw observed listened heard and witnessed to a very powerful degree the right the powerful worship of heaven in fact, even when he came down from that mountain, he was so touched <coughs> that when the people looked at him, his face was glowing. His face was shining. <laughs> he didn't realize. Because it says, and we beholding, as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same likeness from one level of glory to another level of glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So when Moses was there in heaven, in the tabernacle, in the abode, in the place where God dwells, when he was there, he was being transformed as a testimony that, look, this one has been beholding the heavenly things. Amen. And then he sent him down. And look what he began to dispense now. What he began to tell them. He, the kind of worship he began to tell Israel to observe. <clears throat> there is an instruction there. Amen. And it's important to not take notice that this worship is the heavenly worship. This is a timeless worship. The Lord gave them a timeless worship. Amen. But I cannot finish. Can <laughs> we'll finish another time. <laughs> Amen. We'll finish another time. But hallelujah. 
a timeless worship. But you see, later on you will begin to understand that. Really, this is all about worship. Why? Because when the Lord Jesus came, look at this. He meets the woman at the well. And then he says, Woman, a time is coming when people will neither worship on this mountain or in Jerusalem, but that at that time, the true worshippers will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. If there's one thing the Lord wants to achieve in us, is that true worship. It is absolutely everything that if failure to observe this one true worship, you will not enter heaven. Amen? It is about observing this one true worship. My goodness, the Lord went to a great length to reveal the worship of heaven in the wilderness. He opened heaven and opened his heart and lavished Israel with such a huge blessing never seen before in the history of mankind since the fall of Adam. Since the fall of Adam. Never seen before. For the first time in history. He opened heaven. Oh. For the first time. He opened <coughs> heaven and let his glory come down. And revealed himself to the people on earth. That they may finally grasp. Eh? That they may finally get a hold of. That they may finally see and understand and begin to execute the right worship. But you see, it does not end there. Because, because of the sinful nature of mankind, the Lord went to an even greater extent to reveal that heavenly worship even more and to make sure that we execute that <coughs> worship even more perfectly. <laughs> because they worshipped idols and then he decided, no, I must open heaven now. These people need to know me. These people need to worship right. And then he opened. But then there was a problem. Sinful uh, Sinful flesh. And then he went to an even greater extent to make sure that he defeats sinful flesh in, in the flesh. And then enable this sinful mankind to defeat sin and now be able to worship more perfectly. <clears throat> oh, that, that's, that's very powerful. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this powerful <coughs> love this powerful revelation that you have lavished upon us, even today, Lord, as we worship here. Lord, what a privilege we are enjoying today that you have finally, for the first time in history, allowed us to defeat sin. Or should I say, you defeated sin in the flesh and then allowed us for the first time to achieve the righteousness the true heavenly worship that you desire for the first time. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for not allowing us to wallow in idol worship and go on to perish in hell. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you that you have revealed heaven to us, that you have revealed your glory, that you have revealed your, your heavenly abode, your heavenly dwelling, that you have revealed your heavenly place, that you have revealed, O oh Lord, the worship that touches your heart. And help us, O oh Lord, that we may walk in this worship until we enter. Father, let sexual sin stay away from us. Father, let idol worship of all sorts stay away from us. Lord, we don't want this false worship to adulterate, to, 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 to dirtify our worship. 
So we want our worship to be pure. You have gone to such a great extent to make sure that our worship is pure before you. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.